close your eyes, watch your breath, and show some respect for your desire for true happiness. The world would have us aim lower. It's certainly easier to aim lower, easier in the sense of you, don't, you put out less effort in the, for the time being. But there's a lot of suffering down the line when you aim low. Whereas even though when you aim high it's going to require more effort up front, it's more than repaid. If the happiness is really true, in the Buddha's definition of true happiness, you reach a point where you have a happiness that doesn't have to be maintained. In other words, once you've got it, there's no more effort that has to go into it. That's what you want to aim for. And so any other thoughts that come into the mind right now that would pull you away from the breath, you say, where are you leading me? If you stay with the breath, you're headed toward true happiness. What do those other thoughts have to promise? After all, this is for your own genuine well-being. The training that we take on is going to require that we do things that we may not like to do and that we give up some things that we do like to do. But you have to keep in mind, do you really respect yourself? Here you are a human being, you have lots of capabilities. And one of those capabilities is being able to follow the path all the way to the end of suffering. That's something human beings can do. You've got this chance now. Take, make the most of it. When you find yourself suffering from something, remind yourself, okay, if I don't get my act together, it's going to be like this for who knows how long. As the Buddha said, craving and consciousness can keep each other going indefinitely. Do you want to follow them or do you want to follow the Buddha's path? The reason we bow down to the Buddha is because he has us respect our desire for true happiness. Each time you bow down, you should remind yourself, this is why you're bowing down. This is what you're bowing down to. He respected his desire for true happiness, and he benefited from following that desire, respecting that desire. So he sets a good example for us. So not only while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but as you go through the day, your mind starts wandering off into strange alleys. Ask yourself, is this really where you want to go? Is this the best place you could be going? You have the choice. And don't listen to the voice in the mind that says, well, this is just the way I am, or this is what I like. We've been suffering for a long time because we've been following our likes. It's one of the ways in which, as the Buddha said, we go off course, following our likes, following our hatreds, following our delusion, following our fears. Don't let the mind go off course. Stay on course. The Buddha's image is of a road going through a thick forest. If you stay on the road, you're safe. If you start wandering off the road, the axle to your cart may get broken, other pieces of the cart may get broken, and then you're bogged down. So stay on course. Remember, you're showing respect for the Buddha, you're showing respect for yourself. You've worked hard to gain this human life. Now that you've got it, make the most of it. 